Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Decorate Student List in Skeletons for Module 2. And essentially we're going to write a function. Uh, it's going to take in a class list and it's going to output a class list with ages. Uh, they give us this function, get random in inclusive, which is going to allow us to generate a random number between some min and some max, so that'll be 10 and 11. And then we have a function that's going to decorate class list with ages that's going to do what we discussed. Some assertion functions, some test cases, and this will be our skeleton. So this is previously built out, and one of the fun parts about this is that the assertion functions that we're going to use is not obvious. Um, previously we've had problems where it's like, okay, this function returns an object, so use certain objects equal, or this function returns that, uh, you know, like a, a scalar value that's a string, so we need to use assert equal. Um, this one's not quite as easy to figure out. And the reason is, is that this class list with ages is going to have some things that are consistent about it, but the age is always going to be different. The age is going to be randomly generated, so we can't just take this and compare output with this, saying, okay, the output should be this, so we'll make class list with ages, this variable I've highlighted our expected value, we'll run the function, get an actual value, and then just compare them directly to see if they work. That's not going to do the trick, and the reason is, is that those ages might be different. So, let's grab these two, and we'll put them in there in our test cases section. And the reason we put them there is just to have something to look at. So we come up here and we think about the assertion functions to be used. Essentially what we want is we want an assertion function that's going to be able to go along our class list and at the same time check to see if the name matches and that also the age is something that it should be. So we'll think about our function. Our function should be like, you know, uh, some test function and that'll be, you know, uh, takes in uh, class list and class list with ages. And then what this function is going to do is theoretically it's going to iterate over class list and then check if current name uh, is the same between class list and class list with ages. So that's one check. And we're also going to want to check if uh, the age value for current class list with ages object is between 10 and 11. So this part sounds like it, we almost ought to use a uh, assert within range function. So given that we're going to use an assertion, assert, sorry, given that we are going to check at some point if something is within a range, we have a function that can do that. The problem is, is that that function is usually designed to check if one value is between a certain range. So the question about whether or not we should uh, use it exactly as we've seen it before comes up. And the answer, of course, is no. We don't really want to use it the same way where we just console out log the range and the value that missed. Since this is going to be inside of here, we probably want to return like false or it failed or, or something along those lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to write that assert within range function. Assert within range. It's going to be a little bit different though. So function assert within range is going to take a low, a high, and an actual value. And then it's going to take a test name. But here's the thing. I don't think it needs a test name. And I'm going to show you why in a moment. We're going to check to see if low is less than or equal to actual and high is greater than or equal to actual which would mean that actual is within our range. And if it is, we're going to return true. Else, we're going to return false. Now the reason that we're returning true and false and we don't need a test name is because we're going to use assert within range inside of another function. And the way that I'm picturing uh, using it is that it's just going to tell me true or false. It's going to be like, hey, this is either true or it's false. If it's true, do something. If it's false, do something else. Because we know how to do that. So iterate over the class list. So Let's wrap this around a function. We'll say test decorate student list. Decorate student list is going to take in an input and an output. And for now, that's the only parameters that I can think of. It doesn't mean that we can't put another parameter in later. We could definitely add one, maybe something like test name. But for now, let's just leave it as input and output. The input is going to be our class list and the output is going to be our class list with ages. We could call them class list and class with 
class list with ages. Well, once you start doing that, as we saw on the sum and average function, you can run into problems where you accidentally named something in an inappropriate manner. So iterate over the class list. That's relatively simple. We'll say for variable j is equal to, wait, have we written any for loops here yet? We have not. We're going to use i. i is equal to 0. i is less than uh, so over the input. And the input, again, is class list. So i++. plus plus. going to wrap all of this around here because we want to do this for each time. So we're going to check if the current name is the same between the class list and the class list with ages, same as the input and the output. So if input at i, which is going to be some name, let's say Joe, we want to make sure that that is not equal. Well, what do we want to do? Hmm. If it ever fails, we probably want to end the function and log something to the console, which would probably include a test name. But to be honest, we're decorating the class list. That's what we're testing. So test name's probably not even going to come up. If input at i is not equal to output at i dot name, and that's important because the output at i is going to be something like this, this entire object here. So we'll check to make sure that the output dot name is the same as the input at whatever current iteration we're at. If it's ever not, we're going to do, well, what should we do here? And what you want to consider is a possibility at any point when you're programming is to say, end the function, maybe log a failure message. And that's fine for now. We can come back and fill that in afterwards when we figure out exactly what it is that we want to do there. The next thing we're going to check is if the age value for the current class list ages object so that's going to be output at i is a class list with ages object. We want to make sure that that is between our range. So we'll say if assert within range, the function we just wrote up there, and the values we're given to that are a low, low is 10, high is 11, and the actual is going to be the class list with ages object, which again is the output at i. So we'll say output at i. And instead of name, like we did here, it's going to be dot age. And output is something I always write, but it's not a word. Output is the one we want. So if assert within range returns true, we're in good shape. If it returns false, we know we need to end the function. So assert within range is equal to false. Same thing, end the function. Maybe log something to the console. And the function maybe log failure message. Okay, so that seems reasonable enough. Now, how do we end the function? Quite simple. Theoretically, we're going to log something first. So we'll put our console.log, uh, maybe failed at index. Uh, we'll say, hmm, what should we say? We'll say failed, colon. Um, Incorrect. A new version of Replit is available. Uh, can I can I click to not reload? Um, okay. Well, we'll probably just leave that in the corner because I'm not reloading. Mostly because I don't know if I'm going to keep all of this code, and I really want to. Uh, so failed. Incorrect name at index, and then we'll say plus. And then whatever i is, i is going to be the index that it failed at. So we'll say failed incorrect name at that index, and then return. Now return is just going to make the function stop. It's going to end the for loop. It's going to end test decorate student list. So it'll console.log something and then kind of exit. If we get an incorrect age, we're going to console.log failed incorrect age at index, now before anybody, oh wow, we did this wrong. This is not where the plus sign goes. We'll go there. Ah yes, but in case anybody is curious, you're probably gonna see a completely different answer inside of the reference answers and documentation. And that's uh, both on purpose and an accident. It's an accident because I didn't wanna look at the solutions before I did these videos. Uh, but it's on purpose because we're starting to get to the section of the problems where there isn't one way to do it. There's a ton of different ways to do it. 
And what you're doing as the programmer is not finding the correct way. You're discovering a way to justify what you did. You're, you're, you're like working on a methodology through which you could go to another person or yourself in six months and prove that your code works as opposed to proving that your code is the single correct answer that's required. So test decorate student list with an input and an output and sample output. This is no longer really necessary. It wasn't ever really necessary, but the idea was we wanted something to look at. But now since we don't need it, let's comment it out. And let's think about what else we need to do to make our test case actually happen. So for our test case, we have an input class list. We have a function called decorate class list with ages. So we'll say something like variable class list with ages is equal to decorate class list with ages called on class list. This is going to give us a version of something that looks kind of like this, but not exactly. And then we're going to call our test, where to go? Decorate student list function with our input, which is class list and our output, which is class list with ages. It's going to iterate through the class list. It's going to compare all of the names across the uh, both of them. And then it's also going to compare, um, what is it also going to compare? The ages. But we missed a couple of things, right? One other thing we might want to do is if it gets all the way down here to the end of the for loop, we can assume that everything has gone correctly. So at this point, we might want to console.log Oh, we forgot another thing. We want to return here so that the function ends if we ever get a failed incorrect age. But since we got all the way down here, we might as well log past. Because if it iterates all the way through and it doesn't stop because we know it's going to stop and log a message to the console in either failure case, then we'll log someone to the console. You might also consider comparing the lengths of the two arrays. I'm not going to, but you can. So test decorate student list, it will prove that our function works or that it doesn't. So now that we've done all of that, which seems like most of the work, let's jump back up here and finish decorate class list with ages. So if we have an input class list, it needs to create an object for each string in the input array with an age of 10 or 11, returns an array of these objects. So that's going to look like this. Create result array, return result array, iterate over input array, uh, create a new object, set a uh, age or set a name property on new object, set an age property on new object. And then push new object onto result array. That's pretty much going to be it. So we'll say variable result is equal to an empty array. We're going to return that result at the end. We're going to iterate over the input object, which is class list. So we'll say for variable j is equal to zero. j is less than class list dot length. And then j plus plus. Again, you don't need to do this with wrapping your code around the pseudocode. Uh, in my experience, though, it does make it for uh, easier to parse later if you're reading this like as a student. So create a new object. So we'll say variable current student is equal to an empty object. Push new object onto the result array. Result.push current student. And set a name property on the new object. So current student is our current object. Dot name is equal to, and we need to be able to find the name from the class list, which if you remember, the class list is just, where did it go? An array of names. So if we think about that, class list at i will just, is that's going to be whatever the name needs to be. So current student dot name is equal to class list at i. Set an age property on the new object. So current student dot age is equal to, here's where we need to get a random number between 10 and 11, and if we scroll up, there's a handy dandy function, get random int inclusive, which is gonna do exactly that for us. So we'll copy that, paste it here. The lower bound's gonna be 10, upper bound's gonna be 11. Push the result onto the current student, sorry, push the current student onto the result which is done, and then return the result. So let's look all, all of it. We got our random int inclusive generator, decorate in the class list, an assertion function to check within the range, but we adjusted it slightly. Another function, which is not an assertion function, but a test function, which is going to make use of an assertion function, 
I'm going to iterate over an input, check to see if the input name and the output name match. If they don't, we're going to console.log where it failed and return, ending our test function. We're also going to check to see if the range of the age is correct, and if it's never not, we're going to console.log where the incorrect age happened and then return. If we get all the way to the end of the for loop, meaning we've checked all of the values for the input and the output, we're going to console.log passed. Then we've set up a test case where we take an input, an array of names, generate a class list with ages using our generator function, uh, sorry, not generator function, decorate class list with ages, and then we're going to call our test decorate student list with the class list, our input, and our class list with ages output. So I would proffer, I say proffer too often, I would suggest that this is correct and will work and will guarantee that our code works at least to a certain degree. I'm going to run and we'll see what happens. I is not defined. Oh, you rascal. So, I is equal to two plus I. Decorate class list with ages 1937. Decorate class list with ages. Oh, it sure isn't. So here we said class list at I. That is not the variable we're using to inc iterate over here. We want to use J instead. So now that we've adjusted that, there doesn't seem to be any other references to I here. So we'll clear the console and run. You don't actually have to clear it. If you just hit run, it'll clear it anyway. Okay, cool. So we got passed. So for my purposes, that's enough for us. Go ahead and copy all of this. Move back to decorate class list with ages. Highlight everything. Paste in our function. And of course, as you recall, this is the superfluous part of this, but we do want to run the test so we get that nice little check mark. But keeping in mind that we're doing most of the work that you're going to get out of this module on a separate code editor, so you can see it all and test things and adjust things that go wrong. But now that we're back, let's run the tests and see if we're correct. We are. Excellent work, everyone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.